industries top banks Friday. Federal authorities are now taking extraordinary steps to avoid a broader financial crisis. That shutdown caused some people to rush to the bank, and seeing people lining up to withdraw money is, of course, unsettling. Yeah, but the I team spoke to experts today who say your money is safe and there's no reason to panic. It's because of something called the FDIC. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation uh, was set up during the Great Depression. Experts told the IT team it protects the vast majority of bank customers. The most important thing from a consumer standpoint is your money is guaranteed up to $250,000 per depositor, per investment category, per bank. Federal government has now said customers of Silicon Valley Bank will have access to their money as of today, even if the accounts have more than $250,000 in them. Experts also told the IT team it's a good idea to limit accounts to that amount. And if your balance grows beyond two hundred and fifty grand, they say consider dividing it up between several banks. And we want to bring in Brian Levy, now financial advisor and founder of BML Wealth Management. Thanks for your time today. Thanks for having me. Let's start with what happens when a bank fails and how do we get here? Yeah, so I mean, just to start off, a lot of people are concerned. I want to start off focusing how Silicon Valley Bank actually got there. And they're so focused on the tech industry. We all know tech industry is having a tough time right now. So they needed more money out of the bank. The bank ended up having to sell bonds. And as interest rates go up, the value of bonds go down. So once people caught wind uh, that they had to sell off money and they were losing money, there was kind of a run on the bank. It was kind of like yelling fire in a movie theater. Everybody started running out, and that's where we ended up in this position where literally in a, a day, $42 billion got taken out of a bank and they just couldn't sustain it. And it wasn't just Silicon Valley Bank. You know, we saw McCollum Medina, our reporter, had a story earlier in this newscast about First Republic Bank, another bank based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And a lot of customers there were lining up, uh, you know, at branches here over the weekend, wanting to pull their money out as well. So is there concern that more banks could collapse? Yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely a valid concern. Look, as a retirement planner, I'm getting clients emailing today saying, hey, are there other places to hold our money than a bank to pay bills and do those types of things. I would say this, since 1933, there hasn't been one bank depositor that's lost FDIC insured money. So I think it's it's uh, comforting to know that as long as you're under that limit per depositor or per tax ID number, remember if you're a married couple, you get limits on both of you. So 250,000 for you, 250,000 for your spouse, and spread it around to different banks. Um, but you shouldn't be concerned that if you're under that limit, um, that there's going to be a major, major fallout or problem. So that is encouraging to hear. But we also might start thinking, like, are these ATMs always going to be readily accessible? And, and whether it's something like this or perhaps a natural disaster, is it wise to keep a little bit of cash on hand, you know, just in case? Yeah, I mean, they say, look, cash is king. We used to joke around the cash under the mattress or our, our parents or grandparents, so they had it in the cupboards and things like that. Um, so it can't hurt having a little extra cash on hand. Um, we always talk about having emergency fund money set aside, um, just like if you're going to protect yourself and have kind of an earthquake kit at home. I think that's a good idea. But again, what we don't want to do is get emotional because that's when we tend to make poor financial decisions and we want to make sure to stay a little bit more uh, level headed. When it comes to interest rates, do you think uh, this whole episode could keep interest rates from rising again? I, I think it could slow it down. I think the Fed was already signaling they're going to slow down. If there's any fortune tellers out there, they were saying in summertime mm -hmm. we were going to kind of peak with interest rates. But I would say with this happening, because remember, a lot of this is due to the rising interest rates. When right. you have higher interest rates, the valuation of companies go down because investors can't get as much leverage on their money. So it kind of slows down the economy. I would say with this news coming out and we see kind of the systemic effect of it, I would say we're probably going to see some slowing down from the Fed here, at least in the next couple Fed meetings. Yeah. All right. Brian, we do appreciate your time. Thanks again for joining us this afternoon. Thanks so much.